many have tried to politicize clean energy generation. And to that I say this, clean energy generation does not have to be political. It is the way of the future, but we need to make sure we get it right. And we need to make sure we get it right now. This is what an electricity blackout looks like. Now you might not have seen one of these for a long time, or perhaps you've never seen one. And we can thank the strength and stability of our electricity grid that these rarely occur here in Australia. And by electricity grid, I mean the poles, wires, and other equipment which help to transport electricity to our homes. However, for many countries around the world, Blackouts are a weekly occurrence. Hi, I'm Matt. And did you know that introducing a high amount of renewable energy to our electricity grid has the potential to destabilize this grid? And this could lead to more of these annoying blackouts. In fact, the Australian energy market operator, otherwise known as AEMO, is quite worried that our rapid uptake of remote solar and remote wind energy could lead to unprecedented grid-related technical issues. And in several situations, AEMO has been forced to cut the output of some remote solar farms in order to protect the integrity of the electricity system. But what causes these problems though? Well, the issues start with the fact that renewable energy generators generate electricity that is actually different to the electricity that's found on our electricity grid. To understand this more, let's look at the two different types of electricity. So first there's DC or direct current, and next there's AC or alternating current. To unpack this, let's imagine that there's a water pump that's pumping water through a pipe. Now, if the water pump is pumping water in the same direction the entire time, like this, then we can think of this as like DC. However, if the water pump is pumping water forwards and then backwards, periodically like this, then we can think of this as like AC. And the time period between the switching from forwards to backwards for AC is known as the frequency. So if we switch from forwards to backwards really quickly like this, then we can think of that as a high frequency. Whereas if we switch from forwards to backwards really slowly, like this, then we can think of it as a low frequency. Now, of course, instead of there being flowing water in an electricity grid, there's actually flowing electricity. And you might be thinking, well, why do we pump something forwards and backwards? It doesn't really make sense with water. Well, it does make sense with electricity and there are reasons for doing this, which I'll get to later. Now, our grid uses AC electricity at a frequency of 50 hertz. However, solar outputs DC electricity. And wind turbines output AC electricity, but at a different frequency to 50 hertz. So why is this a problem? Well, our electrical appliances at home are designed to operate with AC electricity at a frequency of 50 hertz. And if we give them anything other than this, then they'll likely be damaged all operating correctly. So does this mean that we can't connect renewable energy sources to the grid to provide power to our homes? Well, no. To get around this, we use a device called an inverter. And this inverter converts the renewable energy electricity to the grid electricity and allows for renewable energy generators to be connected to our grid to provide power to our homes. So the inverter is one of the most important pieces of equipment in a renewable energy system. And if you've got solar installed on your rooftop at home, then you're going to have one of these inverters installed somewhere in your house. So best get on the look for it. Now the job that the inverter does, converting the renewable energy electricity to grid electricity is called grid synchronization. We call it this term because we're essentially synchronizing two different forms of electricity together. Now, 
If an inverter gets grid synchronization wrong, then we have to disconnect that inverter from the network and disconnect the renewable energy device in order to protect the integrity of the grid. Otherwise, we'll have a blackout. But if we get grid synchronization really wrong, then we'll have to take out multiple generators in that part of the grid, which will likely lead to a big blackout. So you can see grid synchronization is a really important process and we need to be getting it right. At this stage, you're probably thinking, why did we make the grid AC? Why didn't we make it DC? It'd make much more sense because solar outputs DC. And it's really easy to synchronize to DC because everything's going in the same direction. We haven't got frequencies and things going forwards and backwards. Well, the answer to this question dates back to the late 1800s, where there was a battle between George Westinghouse, who wanted AC electricity, and Thomas Edison, who wanted DC electricity for our grid. Due to technology limitations of that time period, it was far cheaper and easier to transmit AC. So, hence AC1, and now most of our grids around the world use AC electricity. And you might be thinking, well, why don't we switch to DC? Well, the cost of changing over all the power supplies for our electronic appliances from AC1s to DC, and the cost of replacing all the AC grid infrastructure to DC versions is so high that it makes switching to a DC grid pretty not feasible. So we're stuck with an AC grid, and we're stuck with this really complex grid synchronization problem that we need to get right. But we haven't got to the crux of the problem yet. The crux of the problem is that the more inverters that we connect to our electricity grid to provide power from our renewable energy generators, the more difficult grid synchronization becomes for the entire network. And this is a really big problem because Australia and the rest of the world are planning on increasing the amount of renewable energy that connects to our grid. In fact, in New South Wales alone, there's a key initiative from the state government to increase the amount of renewable energy from 21% in 2020 to over 60% by 2030. And as we continue to add more renewable energy to our grid, we're going to need more inverters and we're going to make grid synchronization much more difficult. And this could result in many connection issues for renewable energy generators. In fact, there have already been many existing renewable energy projects that have experienced connection issues from issues like grid synchronization problems. An example of this is the 62 megawatt Kennedy Energy solar wind battery project. Now this project experienced months of delays connecting to the grid that contributed to a loss of over $20 million of investment. Another example is Adani's flagship 65 megawatt solar farm called Rugby Run in Queensland. Now this project had 250,000 solar modules installed in 2019, which sat unused for over seven months yet again due to connection related problems. So if these grid synchronization issues aren't sorted, we're gonna experience many more undesired consequences like this. In fact, the Australian energy market operator, otherwise known as AEMO, may be forced to bring in stricter connection rules for all renewable energy generators to protect the integrity of the electricity grid. And these new rules may take existing renewable energy generators offline or have their outputs reduced whilst the required facility upgrades are being made. Worse still, new clean energy projects may be impeded, altogether abandoned, due to not being able to comply with these new rules. Unfortunately, this means that we may still yet need to rely on some form of coal or gas base generation to take up the slack in these situations, which slows down our uptake of renewable energy. And this is obviously a really bad thing when we're trying to combat things like global warming. In fact, 
Earlier this year, there was a debate raging about whether a $600 million gas-fired power plant was required in New South Wales to address many issues like this. So you might be thinking, wow, this is a pretty major problem. Why haven't I heard anything about it? Well, it's an issue that really only technical experts in this field are aware of. I was lucky enough to join the UNSW Electrifying Labs team where I first gained exposure to this problem. So it's taken me 12 years of schooling, four years of a bachelor degree, and three and a half years of a PhD to come to terms with the scope of this problem. Now I'm an associate lecturer at UNSW and I'm working with the UNSW Electrifying Labs team. And this team consists of a bunch of world leading experts in power systems and many other fields like this. And I've been lucky enough to work on a new algorithm that goes inside the inverter that more robustly synchronizes to the grid and is less sensitive to the number of inverters on the network. So what does this actually mean? Well, essentially, we're building some code that goes inside of the inverter that means that we can connect more renewable energy to the grid without having to worry about grid stability and blackout problems. So I guess you could say we're part of the group of people that are trying to facilitate as pain-free as possible integration of renewable energy to our grid so that you guys don't have to worry about blackouts. So that's me. What do I want you to take away from this presentation? Well, there are three things that I want you to take away. The first thing is that we cannot blindly add renewable energy to the grid and hope for the best. We need to consider many technical issues like grid synchronization before we introduce a lot of renewable energy. Otherwise, we may experience blackouts. The second thing that I want you to take away from this presentation is that there are many other technical challenges that are required to facilitate a smooth transition to 100% renewable energy. And these challenges need serious investment from the government to be solved right now. Otherwise, we may end up with lots of blackouts and grid stability problems. The final thing that I want you to take away from this presentation is that many have tried to politicize clean energy generation. And to that I say this, clean energy generation does not have to be political. It is the way of the future, but we need to make sure we get it right. And we need to make sure we get it right now. Look at South Australia, mostly hitting 100% renewable electricity. Look at Tasmania running on 100% renewable energy. Yes, we can. In Australia, we're already doing it in some states. We are already doing it. It's working. The future is here. We just need to step on the accelerator in other states.